My name is Cheryl Fogo. I'm an author, historian, and playwright. I started writing as a way of telling the stories that I felt were underrepresented. My initial inspiration came from my family because when I was growing up in Calgary, I did not see the same stories that I heard from my family represented in the history books or in literature or any of the books that I was reading. I knew that my family had been in southern Alberta for a long time or in West in Canada since 1910. So I think that was my initial inspiration to start writing. I wanted to tell that story. I just wrapped up the play John Ware Reimagined, but I'm now working on a documentary film about John Ware. It's like a detective story. I'm also working on a novel, and I always have other little projects that I'm working on as well. In 2012, Calgary was celebrating the centennial of the Stampede. I wanted to make sure that John Ware was remembered during that year-long celebration because he was so instrumental in the creation of Western values and heritage. So that was the inspiration for starting to work on the play. My husband is a writer and our two daughters are both wonderful writers. My younger daughter Miranda is also a songwriter and she worked with me on the John Ware project as one of the composers and musicians in the piece. My other daughter, Chandra, is very creative. She helped me to create the John Ware's Southern Alberta Haunts map that we, uh, that we used during the production. So it was a re really was a family affair. Oral history has been a part of African tradition. Now it is important not just to tell those stories, but to also record them through written history as well. It, it kind of validates it in a way. It shouldn't be necessary to validate it, but it does validate it to write those stories down. So it's very important to pass on our history and the achievements and accomplishments of our people to our children and our future generations. When I think back on it, it's actually hard for me to believe the kinds of responses I got in the early days when I was starting out as a writer. I specifically recall a letter I got from a publisher after I sent the manuscript for my first book, Pouring Down Rain, out. It told the story of my family's history in Western Canada, but also the wider story of the 1,500 or so other black pioneers that had come with my great-grandparents. And I got a letter saying there aren't enough black people in Canada for us to justify publishing this book. And when I think back on that kind of thing and how that sort of response, really what it was saying is that your story is not important enough for us to, sh to publish. And second of all, that other people that are not black will not be interested in your story. Well, both of those things are very, very wrong. It, it would have been quite easy just to say, well, I guess I shouldn't be doing this. I guess it doesn't matter. Luckily, I, I did persevere. I did find a publisher for that book. So I did have some challenges like that, just people trying to invalidate my experience. What I would encourage people to do is believe in their projects, believe in their own creativity believe that their stories are important. Just have a core of belief and always remember who you are and why you're doing it. Programs like the Obsidian Awards provide just a platform, a, a visible place where people can come together in the same room. And it's unbelievably inspiring. Young people need to see that there's a very, very wide range of pursuits that people of African descent are doing and achieving to understand that there is no limit to what they can do. In order to achieve excellence, you have to invest in yourself. In order to inspire excellence in other people, you then have to go out and share that gift. You can't hide your light under a bushel.